The destruction was underway by noon that day as tornado producing supercell thunderstorms began crossing the Tennessee River. After causing damage in Benton, Humphreys, and Dixon counties, the storms approached Ashland City, and that's where News 2 video journalist Jerry Barler found himself in the thick of things. We are just now starting to get hail. Oh, jeez, it's hail that's almost golf ball side. It's starting to hit. I saw the funnel cloud. You can see the funnel clouds, Jerry? You can see the rotation. I saw a piece of debris going over the top of the tree. Oh, the hail's starting to come down a little bit stronger. Jerry, I want you to get into a safe location there. That same storm then made a beeline for northern Davidson County. In Goodlettsville, the Metro Baptist Church was hit hard, with 35 preschool children in the back of the building. Miraculously, there were no injuries there. The storm then continued into Hendersonville, and then Gallatin, where the scene turned into total chaos. We have talked to people that literally told me they saw funnel clouds drop out of the sky. They told me that they essentially went to just cover themselves up in buildings and suddenly they were covered by debris and darkness. I talked to a man that said that his boss was dead and then he just tried to rescue whoever else he could get his hands on. And the bad news continued to trickle in. Justin, you've got some information? Yeah, I've got, uh, unfortunately, in the Gallatin area, which was hit twice, two confirmed fatalities oh, in the no. Gallatin area and one serious injury. When it was over, nine were left dead in Gallatin, including one from a heart attack, and 121 people were injured. As the pictures continued to pour in, the breadth of the destruction was enormous. Up to 700 homes and businesses were damaged or destroyed. Volunteer State Community College suffered extensive damage to buildings where luckily there were only minor injuries. This video was taken on a cell phone camera by a Vol State student before he headed for cover. But the destruction was not over yet. Later in the afternoon, another tornado pushed into northern Warren County, north of McMinnville near the DeKalb County line. You could be looking at a tornado crossing over right along Highway 56 in the Green Hill area up to Keltenburg. This tornado killed two people when it completely destroyed two mobile homes on Foster Road in the Green Hill area and was followed two hours later by another tornado that killed one person on Bonner Road near Morrison. In all, there were 11 tornadoes in nine counties in Middle Tennessee that day, with 12 fatalities, including a heart attack in Sumner County. Now, it's certainly a day that we'll never forget, but we hope never repeats itself. Back to you. Well, we did have a report of a tornado on the ground by a train spotter in the Braxton subdivision uh, along I-65 up near Goodlessville. Is that right, uh, Justin? And again, we are showing some pretty impressive uh, wind data and hail information here. You can see just there along Highway 174 coming out of Goodlessville on the east side and up around Hogan's Branch Road, up around White Hill, Millersville, some very large hail possibilities crossing over 258 now. And again, we are looking at the rotation here. Matter of fact, Volunteer State is in the path of this tornado. I just realized Vol State, if you're, as anybody's watching me out there right now, if you're in Vol State, you want to take cover immediately. This is headed generally in your direction. Here would be Gallatin right here, and Vol State would be right about here along the path of Highway 31 East. So as this makes its way eastward, Volunteer State could easily be in the path of this. So uh, I want to let people know, any instructors or anybody that's watching right now, you want to take all those precautions in Vol State. You want to go to the safe place that, of course, the emergency people have told you about at Vol State before. All the schools have done their drills. They all know pretty much where to look. Now we want to yeah, Bob and Ann, the police department had called into the National Weather Service and we were reporting that buildings have uh, sustained damage, power lines over the road, many trees down in the Goodlettsville, inside the city area and surrounding communities as well. And now all eyes are turned towards, uh, here in the Weather Service office, at the uh, possible tornado that's headed towards Gallatin, the that is because basically it is a mess beyond this spot. We are in front of one of the uh, fire departments here acting as a command post. And ambulances have come up this way and then they have had to turn around because apparently it may be very difficult to keep going into Gallatin at this point. We are basically about a mile from the heart of downtown. And as you can see, ambulance drivers going, well, where do we go? Which way to go? Jeff, maybe you can show some of the people. You got traffic lights down there. Here we go, an ambulance coming by you, Jeff. Watch yourself. Good job. Watch this line of traffic. We're going to get out of the way, folks. Let's keep talking, though. What we can do is show you maybe across the way. We are uh, just south by about a couple of hundred yards of Vol State Community College and is just backing up, folks, live TV. Sorry about that. What we're looking at is a home across the way, a uh, magnificent home, and you can see possibly even still through those trees as Jeff zooms in that we are uh, basically dealing with a uh, tornado that probably came at least 
either that way or from the other direction, but uh, maybe we have to move a little bit more. As you can see, just chaos up here, folks. Or GM dealership up the way, and I asked him what it looked like, and he literally told me that he saw cars spinning around. I said, what, on the ground? He said, no, cars in the air. I said, you mean like shingles, like debris? He said, yeah. Uh, we'll try to get his microphone back in just a minute. Uh, as he was talking about Volunteer State Community College, we got an update there. Several walls were knocked down on the university. A couple of minor injuries. Most of the students are okay. Uh, roads to the area are blocked across the street, as Andy was talking about, a car dealership. And some of those cars apparently just blown throughout the Gallatin area. Two confirmed fatalities in Gallatin, one serious injury in Hendersonville. News News' Andy Cordan has returned. Andy, what can you tell us about the damage further north up there in Gallatin? Unfortunately, Bob, where we are is where we are. We can't go any further. In fact, it was nice of them to let us get this far. We had to drive on the side of the interstate, I-65 jacked up all the way way into Nashville. We were driving on the median. Anything we could do to get up here. And as you can see, as Jeff shoots up toward the, the crest of the hill there in front of the McDonald's and one of the major shopping centers here, you can just see cars in the middle of the road. You see lines down. You can see a lot of the uh, signs and facades have just been obliterated. And Mitch, what can you tell us? Well, quite a bit, unfortunately, for the folks here in Goodlettsville. I'm standing right by Gibson Boat Manufacturing. It. Everybody in town just calls it Gibson Boats. And as you can see, their facility has been completely demolished. The roof has caved in on the main part of the facility, also in back where they did some manufacturing of boats, also damaged. Another factory that's just across the street from where we are, not far from Main Street in Goodlettsville, completely leveled down to the ground. As we keep coming around in a circle, you can see downed power lines everywhere. This pole actually snapped at the top and is dangling on some wires down below. I can also tell you that as you go back out towards Main Street, a little bit farther down, I saw some serious damage. There were trees in the Main Street there that blocked traffic up both ways. It made it very difficult for emergency vehicles to get through and do their job. We, we do not need uh, tragedy sightseers. Mayor Foster says there were no fatalities in Hendersonville. However, 120 homes were reported uninhabitable, while 40 homes were completely destroyed. If you want to volunteer, you can go to the Hendersonville Church of Christ, Church of God in Christ, rather, the Hartsville Pike Church of God in Christ, or you can call the Red Cross of Nashville at 320-9253. Now the latest on how the storm damage has affected Middle Tennessee. TEMA confirms nine people died in Sumner County. About 150 people were injured in Sumner County. And about 150 homes in Gallatin were damaged or destroyed. Now thankfully, all water is now safe to drink and the boil alerts have been lifted. Tonight, neighbors in Gallatin are walking through the ruins trying to salvage anything left after the storm. Homes along Coles Ferry Pike and Drivers Lane were turned inside out. News 2 video journalist Mike Browning has more. From the ground and in the air, Gallatin seemed like a scene out of a war zone. All along Coles Ferry Pike, evidence of nature's power, tornadic winds that blew through like a bomb dropped from heaven. The aftermath, homes left in ruins. Chad Rowland and Jennifer Trahan among the victims. I seen it coming right over the top of the hill over here. As a uh, Right as it topped the tree line right over there, I started to take cover in the closet, which is right here along this inside wall of the, or on the outside wall of this bathroom rather, and just hunkered down and waited it out. About five seconds, it was over. That's all that's left. That's all that's left. Chad rode out the storm. So did a woman he didn't even know. A lady that parked in the driveway to take cover in the garage because the garage was open with the uh, truck backed in and uh, after, after the storm was over I went to look for one of the dogs which was under the rubble back here and the lady was hollering for help her and her four-year-old daughter but they were fine we were able to get them out and uh, a couple of gentlemen took them to safety and they ran into our garage to take cover and they got pinned underneath his workbench but they they took him to the emergency room I hope she was underneath underneath this wall right here. Rescuers used a scissor jack and concrete bricks to pry her free. As they sift through debris, eerie reminders give testimony. A mattress wrapped over power lines like it was left out to draw. This is all that's left to sift through and salvage. 
I left my office and said, what are the chances that there's a tornado going to touch Gallatin? It's been 10 years. And then he called me and said our house was gone. So it's hard to take, pretty huh? rough. You don't leave your house in the morning thinking, what can I grab? Jennifer and her six-year-old son were away when the vicious winds tore through their home. I'm just cleaning all this stuff off so I can see what's still left of Jackson's golf clubs. My, you know, just stuff to keep us busy while we're rebuilding. Golf gloves that he got for an Easter present. On the day after, Jennifer's sister is lending a hand. So is Buck Wallace, one of Chad's co-workers. Heard about the devastation that he had and decided to come over and help. Two doors down, neighbors are cleaning up their mess. Oh, it's just devastating. The whole house is a total loss. In their house next door, most of it's, one end of it's tore up, but I think they'll be able to rebuild. This one is gonna have to be tore down. I actually live next door. Uh, we kind of got lucky. Our house is relatively intact, but as you can see, this one, along with all the other ones down through this road, are just gone. The tornado left gaping holes in the home, a French door torn off the back and wrapped around a tree. There was a barn. Where that tractor entire area. Here. What's left of the family barn is wrapped around another tree. The top of a stone fireplace ripped down. Debris Rocks scattered down. everywhere. As far as I know, there's not many injuries up and down our road, so I guess we got lucky. Luck is relative when losing almost everything doesn't include your life. In Gallatin, Mike Browning, News 2.